Welcome to Restoration, Restoration Ministry streaming live from the Resource Center in Connorsville, Indiana. Envelopes for giving and tax purposes are in the basket on the back table. For prayer request, fill out a form from the back table and give it to Connie and we'll include that on our prayer list tonight. If you don't receive outlines or other mailings such as glossary updates, scriptural prayer list updates, and newsletters, please let Connie know. We also have a text to give number, which is 833-758-0290. Again, that text to give number is 833-758-0290. Tonight, Wade continues his training for reigning teaching in Christ. This is the last week for Monday night streaming in 2021. Beginning on January 10th of 2022, Wade will resume his teaching, will resume his training for reigning teaching for four weeks on Monday nights at 6 o'clock p.m. at the Resource Center or on Facebook Live. Wade will continue teaching in Christ. We will let you know if these plans change. On February 7th at 6 o'clock p.m. here at the Resource Center, or on Facebook Live, we will combine training for reigning with a new round of discipleship class, Holy Spirit. This will be a unique teaching on experiencing the gifts. And even if you participated last winter, there's always so much more to learn about how to use your own gifts. And as, as Wade also says, there's always, always more to learn about Holy Spirit. Um, the, the book, Your Holy Spirit Arsenal, co-authored by Wade and Connie, um, will be the textbook and will be provided. Let Connie know if you want to be a part of that class. And I believe also in the back there's a sign-up sheet also. Thank you. Thanks, Charlotte. Mm -hmm. We have some um, wonderful praise reports. First, um, Skylar that we've been praying for because she had COVID. Jeff, do you have an update? Hold on. No, I don't. I, I, I don't. We, we, we've been praying for her like crazy. Uh, she, as far as I got the word yesterday, she's still at Methodist IU. Uh, they were having problems with uh, yesterday with some of the settings on her the machines uh but as far as i know you know she's she's still going we're still praying we're asking everybody to keep praying skylar she's only 30 years old she's a mom of three she's got this this virus from from the pit of hell and and i believe that god is going to have she's going to do a creative miracle for this woman amen amen we we need to remember her testimony now however is amazing because it wasn't that positive a few days ago. So praise the Lord for that. Um, also, well, she got saved too. and she got saved. That's that makes it even better. Thank you, Jesus. Um, we've also been praying for Charlene, and uh, she's she's been here a lot of times, and she's my neighbor. And um, she, she was in the hospital pr for probably two weeks, and she's home now. She's on oxygen. She just texted and said she feels really good. So praise the Lord. Also, um, Jeff's dad had oral surgery, and he needed to get back in to see the dentist. And if you've tried to get in to see some doctors, especially dentists for some reason, it's hard. And they said it would have to be two weeks, and he just couldn't wait. And so the Lord changed that, and a little while later they called and said, can you come in today? So praise the Lord. That's, that's a miracle, isn't it? Thank you, Jesus. Um, Mary testified last Friday about she was here, Mary Wilson, and she said that she was so apprehensive. One morning we prayed because she was just afraid of the rotator cuff. Um, is it? Surgery. Surgery. And she said that everything went so much better than 
the doctor had anticipated. So she praised the Lord for that. Also, Mary Murray's son got a job in his company that's a promotion with more money. So praise the Lord. I have a praise report, and I want to give it before we do our words of knowledge tonight. But last week, if you guys remember, I had a word where I was, I'm going to tell it again because this testimony is awesome. Last week when we were doing worship, and that's usually when the Lord does some powerful words of knowledge, revelations. And so we, I was looking, and it was like a carnival ride where the water would go into like a building, and you would be sitting there like a, a little boat. And I looked in there, I kind of, in this vision, I kind of bent down, and all I could see back in there was darkness. And the Lord said to me to say, don't go. Don't go. Stay in the light. Get out of the darkness. Stay in the light. And so I shared that the other night, and we prayed. And um, a couple days later, somebody contacted me, and she said that she, she's a wonderful, wonderful Christian, and she's been delivered from an ungodly lifestyle for so long. And the enemy was saying, go back. Go into, and go into that darkness. And she was just, she had said to her husband, I'm just getting overwhelmed by darkness. And she turned on the program. And there I said, the Lord says, get into the light. Get out of that darkness. And when, when she heard that, she said, okay, and things changed for her. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What he reveals, he heals. But you have to claim that as yours. You have to say, okay, Lord, I hear you. Doesn't it make you feel wonderful when the Lord knows you enough to single you out and Amen. say, I see this in your life? I saw Amen. something today that was kind of similar to that and I I don't know if if this would talk about anybody that's in your family or anybody who's in here but I saw like a black box and I don't know if it was a man or a woman but somebody was around and was going to open that black box and I knew that it was stuff in the occult and I knew that it was curiosity about what's going on with all of that stuff. And again, no. You open that box, it's a bunch of trouble. So right now, I'm going to pray that, Lord, whoever you are, are bringing to our, to our prayer time, Lord, whoever you are showing us who's curious about that kind of life that is just utterly satanic, Lord, right now we come to you and we pray for wisdom for this person. We pray that that person will see, see this and recognize himself or herself in that. Right now, Lord, we declare that you, you are Lord over this person and you're not going to let them make that decision. In your name we pray. Another thing before Amy, before I um, have Amy share, share with you, when we were doing worship tonight, I saw from the wall there was a beam of light, and we've seen this before. We've gotten pictures of those beams of light that come in. I think I probably showed them to you when we were teaching about the glory, but I saw one great big one, about maybe this big around, that came from this side where the keyboard is over there and came down right here from that wall. And um, then it, it, I just saw it for a little bit. And then I saw a green one that wasn't as big. It was maybe this big around. And the green one came and almost immediately changed into three small white ones again, very bright lights. And then I want Amy to share with you what she saw and what has been happening with her, her ministry when she's praying for people. And then I'm going to 
I'm going to have wait. I feel like the Lord wants us maybe to wait on him to see what revelation he has. Because that's a big deal when his glory comes into this building. So I'm going to have Amy share. Um, well, before I, got, before I came here, I just saw um, like a light, a bright light coming from heaven to earth. And it was like a lightning, I mean, but it was really, really bright. And then I was telling them when I'm praying for people, um, there's been like three different people um, that are seeing like light. Like just after I'm after I'm done, they're like like things that they just see light and brightness. So I just praise the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's just let's just sing a chorus right now. Just open yourself up to hear from the Lord right now. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King. In what you hear, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Shandala basuria tea tulia sukotoro bokoto. Hallelujah. Jesus. I didn't want to see anything. I want to show anything. Praise God. I saw something. I saw that light again, but this time it was like not like a door, it was bigger, wider. It was about the height of a door, but wider, and it was behind Brian, just like it was. It was kind of engulfing. You weren't going into where that door was, but it was engulfing you. Praise God. Praise God. You know, Paul, when he prayed for that church at Ephesus, 
He said, ever since I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for all the saints, I never ceased to make mention of you in my prayers, that the, 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 the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ would give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and was the exceeding greatness of his power toward those who believe, according to the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead and seated him in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that's named, not only of this age, but that which is to come. It's the epiphania, the outshining of the glory of God, those beams of light, <laughs> That God is saying, I've put my message within you. I've given you my son to live within you through my spirit. Now I want you to release that light. Be a, a, a transfer agent of the re very reality of heaven, which is Holy Spirit in your life, to others. Be a transfer agent. And I believe that's what he's saying now. He says, I'm your rock. I'm your security. Don't let fear hold you back. I'm going to demonstrate my love through you like never before. And I mean, that's specific, specifically for you. There's a whole new level of God's power that's going to come through you. But you always have to be a scotch. Know who you are in Christ. Know you're there. And there's a whole new level. That goes for everybody. But I, I, Amy is, 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 she has no reluctance to pray for someone. I mean, no matter, I mean, it doesn't matter who's watching. It doesn't make a diff, any difference. And, and she knows God's going to work. And she knows it's not about her. It's about Holy Spirit that she's releasing into those situations. And that's what we all have to do. And there's a security in knowing we don't have to be able to, we're not responsible for the results, are we? No. There's peace in that. Yeah. You understand? I've heard pastors say, I've heard other ministers say, well, you know, I, I don't really pray for healing because what if they don't get healed? I want to slap them. <laughs> I do. I want to grab them and slam them against the wall. Who in the world do you think you are? We're responsible for our obedience. He's responsible for what happens. That takes all the fear out of it. Makes it fun. There's, more, <laughs> there's no more fun on planet Earth then the see Holy Spirit start to work in an individual's life, whether it's, it's bringing salvation, which includes healing, which includes deliverance, seeing people free, glory to God, sometimes for the first time. You guys are working in a situation where it's a target-rich environment. You can't look in any direction without seeing a target, glory to God. Holy Spirit wants to move on that person. Am I right or am I right? Yeah, I know I'm right. We, go, we do this every day. We, we go by situations. You can't, drive, you can't drive a block in Connersville without seeing a mess someplace, can you? Target rich. Glory to God. And Holy Spirit will tap you on the shoulder and say, that's your mess. You're the transfer agent. Transform that mess into a miracle Amen. through my power. Praise God. Anybody else? Hallelujah, since I took all the time talking. Praise God. Well. I think we need to anoint Brian or somehow that, that message or whatever that message is, is about Brian. Okay. Go back there and do it. There you go. Praise the Lord. We're going to oil you up, Brian. Glory to God. Who else, who else wants an anointing on your life, 
right now. Thank you, Father. I got that. Go ahead and pray for him. You saw it? Pray for him. Lord, right now, we love Brian, but Lord, not anywhere close to how you love him. And Lord, he's, he is hungry for you. He is searching for you. Lord, whatever this is, this glory scene that I saw around him, Lord, if this is calling him to his gate of Mifkad, if it's clarifying things, if it's giving him strength in the storm, whatever it is, Lord, right now we are claiming a miracle, a wonderful, wonderful revelation for Brian. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Does anyone else have anything? I don't want to go ahead too quickly here. Well, praise God. For those who were here last week, I gave you an assignment. Remember that? Who knows what the assignment was? It was a talk about finished work. What's that look like? What's that look like on you? How do you identify the finished work of Jesus? What is it? What is? What happened after he said, "Te telestei"? It is finished. And what are the consequences of that? How how should that affect you? Right here and right now. And then I went into about the identity, mistaken identity. Remember that? And I talked about, I talked about the Israelites. I'm gonna read. Somebody read Numbers chapter 13, verses 32 and 33. You got your Bibles? I want you to read that. And then somebody else pick up Joshua chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. I'll have you read that as well. Numbers 13, verses 32 and 33. Who has it? Good. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, the land we explore devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are of great size. We saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Anak, come from the Nephilim. We, we seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we look the same to them. Okay. So this was the Israelites. They came to this place called Kadesh Barnea. Kadesh Barnea was right on the edge of the land of Canaan or the land God promised them to, that they would have. And so they got there and, and they said, well, we better go in and, and check this place that we're you know, supposed to go into. So they got a, tr a man from every tribe. So there's 12 spies went in. And those spies went in for 40 days and they checked out the entire land. And they came back with a report that Lil just read. They said, oh, the land flows with milk and honey. But the problem is, is that you've got to milk some cows and swat some bees. And those are big bees over there. There's giants in the land. And we looked at them, and we were like grasshoppers in their sight and in our sight. How many know that's the mistaken identity? That's not who they were. They were the most miracle-experienced people on the earth. They'd seen all the miracles of, of deliverance that God had. They went through the Red Sea. It parted for them. They saw Pharaoh and his, those, those 300 chariots drowned in that sea. They saw water come from a rock. They saw uh, 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 the, the waters at Mara, that oasis where there were poisoned waters. They saw that healed. They, 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 they were fed every morning. They went out and they gathered up manna for their food. Miracle after miracle. And yet they could not get over their mistaken identity, their grasshopper mentality. And so they refused to go into the land. Ten of those twelve spies, who were the two spies that believed God? Remember? Joshua and Caleb, right? They said, let's go in now. Let's go in and take it. We're 
more than able in God in, to, to, to go in and take the land. But they refused. And that entire generation from age 20 up had to die in the wilderness. They never got to go in. They tried to. Didn't do them any good. And so all but Caleb and Joshua had to die in their grasshopper mentality. So for 40 some years, they were out there wandering in this wilderness situation. There were 41 encampments in that wilderness, by the way, for those 40 years. So there they were. And then they come back again to the very same place. This time they only sent in two spies. Two. And they went in and they, they went into Jericho, that Canaanite stronghold. And who has Joshua? Chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. You've got that, Mark? Good. And before they were laid down, she came up, in, up unto them upon, upon the roof. She said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land, land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water, the Red Sea for you, when you came out of Egypt, and what you did unto two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sahan and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. Okay, 40 years later, listen to me, 40 years later, think back 40 years, hard, hard to remember, isn't it? Well, this is 40, and, and, and these two spies were in there, and, and this Rahab, who was a harlot, you know, she, she was, that's how she made her, she hid them. And then she told them the story. She says, hey, we've been, we've been quaking in our boots about you guys. We, uh, we know that you're going to take the land. Remember the grasshopper mentality? Well, the giants were fear, uh, fearful of them because they heard of what their God did. Does this make any sense to anybody? And they didn't have a fire and arrow. Do you, know, do you know what the enemy thinks of you? He is, because he knows he is powerless. He knows he's relegated to darkness. All he can do is suggest things. That's all he can do. He has no power. He knows exactly his position and the position of all his hierarchy, the demonic force the principalities and powers and rules of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in heaven. He, they're all relegated to chains of darkness. They're all, they were defeated at the cross, totally defeated. They have no power. And they're scared, spitless of you. That's who you really are. So what do you think about getting rid of the grasshopper mentality that's in the church today? Because it's real. I'm going to talk about that tonight. I'm going to talk about the finished work of Jesus Christ if somebody helps me. <laughs> Can you think of some scriptures that would talk about the finished work of Jesus Christ tonight? What happened here? What happened right there? Right here. What happened? What happened to you? Somebody, somebody help me. The light, Lord. the light was turned on. The light was turned on. What about the light? I began to recognize what Christ is in me, what kind of power that I had over, over darkness in general. 
all the mistakes that I made, were that, those are the mistakes that I made in darkness. And then his light showed, showed me that. And then his light also showed me that through him I have power over that. And I don't have to do it anymore. Amen. Amen. That's good. Who else? Well, I think one thing that it showed me is that I have regained my identity, my true identity of who I am in Christ and how much power I have and how I can't wait to stomp on the devil, even with my bad hip. Amen. There you go. So there you go. There you go. Praise <laughs> God. Any of you guys back there want to, want to say something? I, I don't want to force you to, but I, I want you to look. I've been up here beating my gums for weeks now about this this whole situation about the cross. That it is way more than what most of the church thinks it is. Just a historical event that has little relevance on our lives today. Because now we've got to do a few things in order to get saved. Hello. Am I right or am I right? I know I'm right, so you might as well agree with me. Or else, unless you want to have a fight, glory to God. And I'm too old to fight, so there you go. So what, what else here? Who knows 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21? Who knows what that says? 2 Corinthians 5, 21. This is a big one because the old identity says, well, Brother Wade, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. Go ahead, Jeff. Sin was judged at the cross. Yes, exactly. 2 Corinthians 5, 21 says, For he, the Father, made him, Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He became sin. Do you know the ramifications of that? For you? I, come on now. Don't look at me like it's, this is the first time you've heard this, because I know it's not. Yes, he became your sin. What you've done in the past and whatever you will do in the future. Sin and all of sin's consequences were eradicated. What this bird brought in to the earth, Adam, Jesus eliminated it. Here. That's when he said, take to less the eye. It's finished. It's finished. What does Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14 say? Somebody want to read that? Okay, here. Chapter 3? Yes, 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Okay, so he became the curse of the law. The curse of the law. Anybody know where that is? If I were to ask, and I am asking, where is that listed in Scripture? Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15 through, I believe, 68 is the curse. That's eliminated. Done. He became that. You know what that took into account too, men and women? Generational curses. They're gone. Done. Over. Finished. Who wants to explain what a generational curse is? Somebody help me. Well, I believe a generational curse is a curse on uh, that you receive from your uh, uh, ancestors. 
for, for as many as four generations before you. So uh, offenses, uh, curses uh, that a great-great-grandfather or great-great-grandmother or somebody of uh, delving into uh, tea leaves and a cult and so forth are often passed down, can be passed down to as many as four generations. So that would include alcohol, drug addiction, I anything would, like that. I would any presume. kinds of sin, any kind of sin that was done through the generations, right. any kind of trespasses. You see, there's a difference between sin, trespasses, and iniquity. Oh. Could you explain that to me? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's go to let's go to a psalm. Let's go to Psalms uh, uh, let's see. Thirty two. They're also mentioned in Psalms fifty one, but we'll go to Psalm thirty two. It's all eradicated anyway. It says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven whose sin is covered. Blessed is a man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. So sin is, the Hebrew word here is chata, C-H-A-T-A-A-H. And it means offense or to fall short. Actually, what it comes back down to is a lost identity. A wrong identity, falling short of what your identity really is. That's sin. And it's not, it's not, many people say, well, that's the acts you do. That's sin when you do this. And when you, no, no, no. Sin is what causes those acts. Wrong identity. You're just not, you're just not right. <laughs> you're not in your right mind. It's a mindset that's been lost. Transgression is the word pasha, P-A-S-H-A. And it means a rebellion or a revolt against God in His truth. That's a transgression. And iniquity is the word A-V-O-N, Avon. And I don't think it has anything to do with the uh, uh, beauty products, but it, it's iniquity, okay? That's a Hebrew word. And it means perversity or crookedness. It's, a, it's heritage based. That's the curse that comes down through the line. Iniquity. And it, it's a predetermined choice without repentance. Some people are just bent on evil, their conscience is seared. Iniquity. And you know what this did? X it all out. So, just because your daddy was an alcoholic, your granddaddy, and your great granddaddy, and great great granddaddy, it doesn't mean you have, because that was cut off. That's cross. They just didn't know it. You understand this is realizing who you really are. It's what cuts it off. But until you're saved, they still affect you, the curse until you're saved. If you don't know it, you can yes, you can operate in it. But he did it for everyone. This is not just for a select few. He did it for all. But they don't know they're still in darkness. And in dark when you're in darkness, you're in ignorance. You don't know. And guess who's been relegated to darkness? Satan and his demons. And, and remember in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 6, where it talks about strongholds? Paul said, for though we walk in the flesh, we don't war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not fleshly. They're not of this world. But they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Remember that? And he tells you what the strongholds are. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and punishing every disobedience until your obedience is fulfilled. So all that goes on right here. 
And it's all about your identity, and it's all about the fallen mindset. And we've got to get our minds right, because this is where the battle is. And a stronghold is an area of darkness that gives those demons legal access to come and go with their thoughts and their activities in your life. That's why it requires the renewing of the mind to prove God's will. Is that what you're going to say? So that's why this noodle has to be renewed. Where's my, where's my, uh, oh, you've got it. Okay. He's just slapping his lips. Nobody could hear him. Here we go. <laughs> it's when like you're, me. So that's the exchange of mind. That's when you're burying the darkness in your life and you're accepting Christ in, into your life as the light that turns on the light into all your sin and that sends it away, sends it packing. Amen. And, and what is that called in Scripture? Salvation. Well, no, what's part of, before the salvation comes, what do we do? Uh, there you go. Repentance, right? Right. And you know why I feel about that word? That, you, that you said repentance. I said exchange of mind. Exactly. That's what it is. It's a metanoia. Right. It's that Greek word that there is no English comparable word that really talks about it. It is an exchange of our mind. It's going in the opposite direction. It's Listen to this. It is co-knowing with God. Having his mind now instead of this old carnal mind. Yes. See, God is a... Holy Spirit is not in the behavioral modification business. Religion's in that business. They're in the real business. You got to do this now. You may not be saved, but you got to act like it if you're going to come in here. Huh? Huh? Oh, you better shape up, girl. Where's your dress? Down to your ankles. And you, your hair, your, I know you give me a redneck, but I'm just telling you. I better pay attention. I might not get to eat anymore this holiday season. It'll be doing me good. I've been putting on weight anyway. Everybody knows what I'm talking about, right? That metanoia is what says, well, I've been, I've been wrong about my identity all this time. Now I'm going to put on this new one. I'm going to learn what it's all about. I'm going to learn what this, this cross was all about, what happened here. Because it changed all of humanity. From Adam all the way to the last person ever to be born, it transformed all of humanity, all of mankind. <laughs> Sin is no longer an issue. He became that. He became the curse. Oh, yes. Is it still out there? Oh, sure. Sure, there it is because people are still in darkness. They don't know that they've been redeemed. It's been done. They just don't know it. Most of the church doesn't know it. They're still dealing with the do-it-yourself. Right here it is. Do-it-yourself law of works. A merit system. Well, they may have enough faith, that, you know, to, to say the prayer and, and say, yeah, I'm saved now, and, and get a pat on the head and shake a hand, you know, that, that, you know, there we go. But now here's a list of rules, and if you don't keep the rules, you're out. You're backslid. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Some of you guys have probably been burnt by that. I'm trying to tell you who you really are. You all got our, our handout, don't you? I'm going to go through this. There's so many more scriptures. But under Adam and the old identity that well, he brought in, you're just an old sinner. You're unworthy. Anybody ever felt unworthy? Unrighteous, meaning you have no standing. You're just at a worm, and you got to grovel. You, you, you have this idea that God is an angry, an angry deity that all he's wanting to do is punish you and send you to hell. When Jesus said in John 5, 22, the Father judges no one. For he has turned all judgment over to the Son. And guess where 
sin was judged. You got it right here. Right there. The next one. Full of condemnation, guilt, and shame. There's whole services devoted to renewing your salvation. Renewing it. And the altars are full of tears and, and other things. And, and I'm just telling you right now that it's more about remorse than it is mind change because the mind has never been changed. They still have a wrong identity. They're still just old sinners. And they're going to try harder to be like Jesus. It's all about do, do, do. Be more like Jesus. I mean, they'll be encouraged. You need to be more like Jesus. You need to try harder to be like Jesus. Folks, only Jesus can be Jesus. You were not to try to be like Jesus. You're to be a container of him and let him live his life through you, uniquely as you. There's a huge difference. Holy Spirit is going to be your guide. He's going to give you what to do and not to do. He's going to give you peace and joy unspeakable. He's going to give you confidence. You don't need a list of rules. As a matter of fact, all that list of rules is going to do is empower you to go against them. The law is the power of sin. So the do-it-yourself law of works right here, that's the old identity. Do, do, do. Generational curses done away with. Fear-based mindset. Most prayer meetings are all fear-based in the church. You go to a prayer meeting today, and you'll be the same people there, and, and, and they'll always be praying about one, probably about one, two or three things, about finances, about lost sons and daughters, and about uh, 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 gossip about what somebody's doing something, and we need to pray for them. But it basically is gossip about them. Am I right? Anybody ever been one? I know I'm stepping on toes, but it's all fear-based. Which is all bondage, without the bond. <laughs> there you go. I'm going to start tossing just to people. <laughs> this is everything that you've listed is about the, the condemnation, uh, do-it-yourself works. All, it's, it's the laws saying you need to do this, you need to do that, or you, you need to be... I'm going to take you by the hand for a second. All right. I'm going to lead you around. Okay. Because I've got to hold you. This is the bondage. I'm going to lead you around. All right. You do this. You do that. You go over here. You stand here. You be this. You, this, is, this is the law. And okay. all the time, I don't want to go. Right. And you don't want to go. Because, but the bondage is me holding your hand and yeah, pulling along. Yeah, that's trying to get me. Right. Because I really don't want to go. Right. But it's all bondage. Yes. But there's no bonds. There's no, there's no shackles. There's no leather bands. There's nothing draggier. There's no leashes. It's all bondage. Bondage of darkness, right? Yep. That's it. And we're free. Sounds like you've been there for a while. And we're free to that. Amen. Amen. We are free of it. Praise God. And so, and there's also no more of this. Who knows what that says? Sin consciousness. Sin consciousness. Can you define to me, somebody define for me what? Sin consciousness is. What is it, Amy? It's always worried about you're going to you're going to do this. You're going or I can't do this. I can't do that. Or um, I don't know. And yeah. it's not um, you don't really you don't have a sin mindset anymore. I mean, you're you're going to you're not going to be perfect, but it's not an issue in your life anymore. But you know, some people want to, oh, I'm just a sinner. I'm a sinner. We're all sinners, yeah. We are sinners, but that was taken care of at the cross, and we don't have to live in that mess anymore. You know, what's it say in Proverbs 23, verse 7? For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So if you're sin conscious, 
then no doubt you're a sinner. Because that's all you think. That's all you think you are. Yeah. You see, there's a difference between being sin conscious and kingdom conscious. Let's, let's go to, to, let me look this up, 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. And I know how this has been taught, and I want you to understand that uh, what I'm going to tell you. It says, examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith, not in sin, right? In the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Don't you know that this is your identity in Christ? That's what Paul's saying. <laughs> Unless indeed you're disqualified, you're still back here in Adam. But I trust you will know that you are not disqualified, that we are not disqualified. So what he's saying is, look at yourself. Don't look for sin. Look for Christ. Mm. Because that's who you are. Does that make sense? Praise God. That's it. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to get a pen, and on this, this, this paper you've got, I want you to do this. I want you to cross this mess out. Whoa. Just take a, a pen and just cross it out. That's no longer part of our lives. We're, we're, we're eliminating that. That's no longer you. Say this with me. That's no longer, That's no longer me. me. I'm out of that mess. I've, I've been to the cross in Christ. You died in him. All that died when he died. And when you rose in him, you came out of that. Totally came out of it. So cross out that old identity. Just cross it out. I want you to, to, this is a prophetic action. When you're doing this, I think there's a Holy Spirit doing something in your spirit. Glory to God. It's out of your life. Now what's come back in? The finished work of Jesus Christ. What he did right here. Huh. Salvation came into your life. Wholeness came into your life. Spirit, soul, and body. You are justified. You're being sanctified, and you shall be glorified. You're healed right now by the stripes he bore. That's reality. That's what's happened. You say, well, I'm not manifesting that. Well, it doesn't mean that it hadn't happened. You need to believe it and act on that. You know why people don't receive their healing? They don't act on it. There's two things about faith. Believing in your heart and acting on that belief. And some people really believe, but they never act. And it takes the action to activate the faith, to bring the healing. Because as you've already, it's already yours. Listen, you've got money in a bank account at the bank, right? But you have to get Either write the check or you have to make the transaction on your computer in order to get the finance. You have to act on that in order to get that money out, don't you? One way or another. You have to drive to the teller and place a demand on your money. And you don't have to grovel. You don't have to beg that teller. They're just going to do it, aren't they? Because it's already yours. And you can be nice and smile and say, thank you. You don't have to grovel at them or, or, or shake your fist at them. Get that out of here. No, no, no. They're going to give it to you because it's yours. That's just like your healing. That's just like every covenant promise of God. It's already yours. Didn't Peter say, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord as his divine power has given us how many things? Oh. All things. Your bank account's full. Of all God's covenant promises. It's yours. He's given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him. Who's called you by glory and virtue. By which have been given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises. His covenant promises. That by these you may be a partaker of the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Glory to God. It's yours. 
You're a new creation. You're, you're that partaker of his divine nature. He's come to live in you. You're the temple of God. You're the holy of holies. Is this, is this penetrating? Is this getting into you? Men, is this making any difference in your life? Please, I, I, I need to know. I pray it is. I know we've all, most of us have grown up in a religious training that we think this is, this is ours forever on this side. No, no, no. No. I've understood what the cross means. I've understood what the finished work of Jesus Christ is and what that means to me. I've been made righteous. Whew. Right standing with God. I can meet him face to face. That's what it means. Face to face without shame, guilt, or condemnation. Face to face. As a matter of fact, he says, Wade, you're my son. Amy, you're my daughter. I've given you the same inheritance as I gave my first begotten, Jesus. You have the very same resources of heaven that he has available to you now. That's why you can pray for people and expect him to act. Because you know who you are. Glory to God. Filled and led with Holy Spirit. <laughs> oh my. You don't need a list of rules. He's your guide. Equipped by Holy Spirit, the very charismas, the gifts of Holy Spirit. And that's what our next discipleship training is going to be all about, those gifts of Holy Spirit. So you can do the very same and the greater works that Jesus said you'd do in John 14, 12. He who believes in me, the works I do, they'll do also. And greater works than these shall they do. Because I go to my Father. And he went to his Father. He said, Holy Spirit, to live in us. You and me. And he comes in with the very ability of Jesus Christ. And we're going to learn about that more and more. And we're going to begin to exercise that. <laughs> Praise God. Is it? You know, I, I, I'm used to resistance. But somehow this is different tonight. I'm getting resist. Maybe it's from the camera. Maybe there's people there that say... I'm crazy. I don't know. Not from the camera. No. It's, no I'm not blaming you, Jeff. I'm just, you know, I'm just feeling resistance tonight for some reason. That just means I'm going to plow in deeper. I might have to grab some folks here tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You're more than a conqueror. You're always caused to triumph in Christ. You know, being a conqueror is one thing, but being more than a conqueror is something else. That's a hard one for me to think about, being more than a conqueror. That's who we are in Christ. Again, we've been given all things that pertain to life and godliness. We're a transfer agent of the very reality of heaven to earth. That's what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 1.20. For all the promises of God in Christ, in him, are yes. 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 And in him... Amen, meaning? So be it. So be it. That's the way it is. To the glory of God. You see, being a transfer agent demonstrates His glory. But the glory is going to only manifest how? Through us. Through us. For all the promises of God in Him are yes, and in Him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Say, through me. Through me. Mm -mm -mm. But you've got to know he's there before it comes through you. You've got to know you're a transfer agent. That you're in partnership today with Almighty God through Holy Spirit living in you to demonstrate the reality of heaven coming to earth through us. That's the resources that are flowing and we become a conduit, a funnel for those that go into the earth. And now we have God's faith. Don't worry about your faith. You've got God's faith. He lives in you. I could have faith in his faith. And his faith is all about what he did even before Adam fell because he put you in Christ right here before time began.
before the foundation of the world. Ephesians 1.4. That was his plan all along, and it's mission accomplished. <laughs> so, a whole new identity. You're in Christ. This is the result of the finished work of Jesus Christ, and that is basically just an overview. There's much, much more that's yours here and now. This is no longer relevant in your life. This is who you are. Praise God. So, I know I went through that quickly, and it won't be the last time. Trust me, it will not be the last time. Look, there are, now trust me on this, there are doctors of theology that don't understand what I put on here tonight. They've got the titles, they've got the degrees, but they don't have a clue about the reality of Holy Spirit, of being in Christ. They can quote uh, uh, Hebrew and, and, and Greek and probably speak in Aramaic, but they don't know the reality of Holy Spirit, of being in Christ. They've never really seen the finished work of Jesus Christ in the totality of the cross of Calvary, his finished work. You've got it, and that's who you are. Praise God. So go ahead and pass those out, Connie, if you want to. Okay, I will. Um, well, actually, I have a couple of words of knowledge. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I, I didn't think to say this a while ago. It was written on my paper, and I didn't read it. But um, I put it on Facebook. Somebody has a pain where the neck and the shoulder meet, and um, I had... Lois, Donald, Deb, Romy, Wade has a pain in his shoulder. Um, then the second one was pain in the shoulder blade, so on down the back a little ways. Um, and Richard responded to that, but Romy said that all of those details are describing her. She's on our prayer list for the arm, and she said it's affecting her arm too, so uh, is... Does anybody here? No. Wes does? Okay. Why don't why don't you stand in for Wes and who's who'll come up and stand in for these other people? For Lois, Donald, Romy, Deb, Richard. Okay, Mark. And I don't know where the Right here. Anybody else here have those symptoms? Okay, Mark, come on up. Praise God. Lord, we know that we know that we know that what you reveal, you heal. And right now I'm going to claim, I'm going to say out these names for Wes, for Lois, for Donald, for Romy, for Deb, for Wade, for Richard, right now, we are coming to you. Thank you, Father. As a point of contact for Amy and Mark, who are standing in for these people who are dealing with shoulder blade and shoulder in the neck kind of area, Lord. Right now, we declare healing, healing, Thank freedom you, from pain, freedom that people don't have to have surgeries, Lord, that people are healed because we know what we know and we've seen it time and again. So right now we are bringing all of these people who've responded. And Lord, anybody else who sees this in the future, take care of it, Lord, in your name. Amen. Are you Praise God. all of them, Amy? Praise God. Do you need some help to your chair? Amen. Amen. Sure. Thank the Lord. Okay. Praise God. And then you got those other prayer lists, Connie? Yeah. We'll just pass them out. 
And thank you for praying for those folks. We've got a long prayer list tonight. Hallelujah. Praise God. Just go ahead and pray for them as the Holy Spirit leads you to pray. Father, right now, for those that are on our list for physical healing, Lord, we've got people on their long list for cancer, for autoimmune disease, diabetes. We've got COVID uh, uh, folks that have been attacked by this China virus and all the variants of it. We've got people that have, 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 have been in accidents who have all manner of, 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 of different sicknesses and flus and, 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 and uh, uh, surgeries that they're recuperating from. I thank you, Father, right now. We know, we know that by the stripes you bore that they were healed. So we're praying right now, Father, for that beam of light that you showed Connie and you showed Amy, that, that glory, that beam of your glory would shine upon their hearts that they come to the understanding that they were healed and they're acting on that healing now in Jesus' name. They're receiving everything that you bought and paid for them and that's by the stripes you bore they were healed. So we're declaring it so right now. Just a touch of your resurrection power be released into their bodies right now in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father, for that. We thank you, Father, for filling the void of that unloving spirit for those under addictions tonight. Filling that void with your love, pouring out your love in their hearts right now. All those fear-based uh, 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 maladies and, and diseases right now that your perfect love casts out all fear. All those self uh, people that have a roots of self-rejection and self-hatred, we cast that out tonight in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father, again for your love filling the void, your healing virtue. Thank you, Father. All those roots are gone. And we thank you, Father, for your sweeping presence of Holy Spirit in lives right now and in bodies, bringing healing into their lives. Thank you, Father, for deliverance tonight for the teens Lord, from the areas, of, from that gross darkness that they're, even in the educational system right now, that are reinforcing these things. And I thank you, Father, that your light of truth is being released to them. That what they're dealing with right now does not satisfy. And we come against spirits of, a, of suicide, of addiction, of homosexuality, of all these perversities that are being released in these young people. And I call for a revival in, in, in the youth. A total turnaround, a total revival where they just get sick of the sickness that's in society and they're, they're demanding a change. And I thank you, Father, that the change is coming through Holy Spirit. And I thank you, Father, for these young warriors coming forth, spiritual warriors coming forth in the power of Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for moving in lives tonight. Thank you, Father, for those uh, uh, on our list, those ladies on our list that want to want babies, want to be pregnant, want to want to. I pray for divine fertility in their lives tonight. A miracle right now, Father. Give them the desires of their hearts right now, Father. Move in their lives and let them conceive. Just as Mary said, "Be it unto me, be it unto me, be it unto them, Father." Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for the, those that are here tonight, for moving in their lives tonight, that they come to understand. No doubting. You're a God who dissolves doubts. No doubting any longer who they really are, what their true identity is. That they know, they know for a certainty that they are in Christ, right here and right now. For you're the, you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You live in the eternal now. You bring your very power right now, right now, in this moment. And we thank you for it, Father. We thank you for it in their lives, each and every person tonight. May there be a transformation. May there be a, a, a new joy spring up in hearts tonight. Let them be filled with your peace and your joy in knowing 
This new creation lifestyle is theirs as they begin to walk in a new dimension of life that you have made available through your finished work. I thank you for it, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for awakening the church to the truth of who they really are, of this, of this identity that you have, have, are showing us right here, right here in this place. You're showing us this true identity of who you meant us to be from before the foundation of the world that the church begins to understand, understand who they are. I thank you for leaders stepping up and, and declaring truth, a clarion call for people to, to be who they've been designed to be in their original identity. Containers and expressors of the very life of God. I thank you for it, Father. I thank you, Father, for a moving, uh, a move of Holy Spirit that people step right into, that river of life, that river of Holy Spirit that, that the church is stepping into right now. You are already moving. We don't have, we're not asking you to do a new move. You're already moving. We just have to recognize and step into what you're already doing and already have done. And I thank you, Lord. Oh, my. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this Epiphania moment. Mm. As your light beam of glory comes into our lives. And let us be examine ourselves and find Christ in us. The reality of Holy Spirit working within us. Thank you for it, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name. Connie, do you have anything else? Jennifer, back and shoulder blade. It's been hurting for weeks. Right now, we, Jennifer, we say be healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, be healed. It's yours. Healing is yours. And I speak to her back. I speak to that shoulder blade right now. Uh, I believe Connie had that, that, that word of knowledge. We know what you reveal, you heal, so it's a done deal. So just act on it, Jennifer, right now in Jesus' name, and we consider it done. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you, you, you love us so much, you even love these earth suits. These earth suits that, that over time tend to wear out. Glory to God. But he still keeps us moving, doesn't he, Dave? Praise God. Amen. Through his resurrection power. And we thank you for it, Father. You're just releasing favor all around. Hallelujah. Rivers of blessing flowing right now. And they're flowing to you who are watching tonight. Healing blessings. Deliverance blessings. Oh, my. Financial blessings flowing. As you begin to understand the very kingdom principles of, of, of that Holy Spirit's using in the earth today. And I thank you for it, Father. Anyone else have anything before we close tonight? Wait, why don't you come against some generational curses that have been that people haven't been delivered from? Amen. Amen. Just lift your hands up right now. Any generational curses that are in your life or in your family tree, just take them right now. You see, these are all these things that, that have come down even through the generations. I've never even met these people, but I'm still suffering from it, and I'm taking them, and I'm, I, I, I'm holding them right here, and I'm going to throw them right over my shoulder, out of my life. Go ahead. Toss them out. Hallelujah. We come against alcoholism. We come against drug addiction. We come against diabetes. We come against all the things of the flesh that were in Adam right now. We're coming against cancer. We're coming against heart attacks. We're coming against all those, those things that have come down through family trees, family lines, in the, in the very lineage of Adam. And we were transplanted out of Adam, out of Adam, into Christ. And now our heritage goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and, 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 and Jacob, and glory to God. You've transplanted us into Christ into eternity, and we declare it so. No longer does Adam and all of Adam's offspring have any influence on our lives. None whatsoever. And we declare it so. Generational curses were handled at the cross, and there they were taken to the tomb, and they never came out. And we thank you, Father. They're dead and buried, gone forevermore. In Jesus' name. Praise God.
Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't have to hold grudges like old Charlie Urban used to hold. Hallelujah. That's gone. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Well, glory. What's on your hearts before we close? Yes. Bob's his, his wife's in a hospital. Um, let's pray for her. Pray. She needs prayer. Go ahead. Father, in the name of Jesus, I know that you can, and I ask that you would on behalf, Lord, you tell us. You told us in your word, ask and you shall receive. I'm asking, Father, on the family's behalf. She's got a boy named Todd and a boy named Chad, and they have grandchildren, Lord. And they have been your faithful servants for many years, Lord God. I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, to heal her now. Give her her strength. Allow the oxygen back into her system where it's inhibited by this Chinese virus, Lord. I know that you can, and I ask that you would, Father, in the name of Jesus. But thank you, Lord, for your finished work. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. We call it done. Thank you, Father. Well, praise God. Anybody else? I want you to all have a great Christmas and New Year. And if you can, be back with us. We're going to be back here on a Monday night on January the 10th. And then we're going to start our discipleship, which is all going to be on Holy Spirit, our Holy Spirit arsenal. And if you want to be, we're going to do that right here on Mondays at 6 o'clock. And so we're going to combine our training for reigning with our discipleship. And if you've been through this before, which some of you have, it's going to be different. It always is different every time we teach it. And we're going to have more activities going on with the gifts of Holy Spirit. And you're going to find out how these things work through you, how the charismas work. That's what the gifts are called, the charismas, the very graces of God. And so... And there is a sign-up sheet, or you can tell us that you want to be a part of it. And you get a book, you know, you get a book, unless you have, or have one, you, you, you get a book. We'll make sure you have that. And this goes for everybody that's watching tonight via Facebook. So just let us know. Praise God. And so I'm going to wish everyone a glorious Incarnation Day as we celebrate God becoming one of us. Mm. Yeah. The miracle of that. The Creator becoming one of His creation. And yes, I'll say Merry Christmas to you Amen. and a Happy New Year. And I declare the blessings of God over you and your family during this season, this special, unique season, that you would experience the true joy of His presence in your life so that you will never again be the same in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God.